subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett are back with you again. We're excited to be here, spend more time with you. And uh, we got a great topic today. Um, I will go quick on the intro here. One, if you want to learn more about what we talk about, the background of all of our philosophies around real estate and selling and all that, go check out ninjaselling.com. Easily find it on the internet. Uh, you can also, once you're there, you can check out coaching. That's where Matt and I spend a lot of our time. And we've got, well, I have about 30 coaches that I oversee that are all there also to help you implement Ninja into your business and life. And one thing we don't talk about very often, Matt, is that, uh, yes, we do focus on real estate a lot. We coach people in the insurance industry, in the mortgage industry, financial planning industry, attorneys. Anywhere that you deal with people, we can apply Ninja and we help people implement that into their world and their life and their business. With that being said, uh, you can also go check out our Facebook page, which is the Ninja Selling Podcast community there. Uh, we have an amazing group of people that are all there to support and help each other around topics that we talk about on the podcast and involving Ninja. Matt, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, good morning, Garrett. I'm excited. We got a good episode. We've been leaning in, rightfully so, to a lot of um, real estate related strategies and things. And and because how do we get more buyers and more sellers and things like that and and systems and operations? We have not kind of leaned into the personal side in a little bit and kind of looking under the hood of ourselves. And this is something that we are coming across a lot right now in our coaching, and which is common one in summertime as the market does its summer thing. And two, when you see challenges in the market like high interest rates and all these things. So I'm excited to kind of take a look under the hood. I'm happy you said looking under the hood. I know. I know. That was that was on purpose. <laughs> Pun intended. And then I'm sure everyone's like, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go again. It'll be another car episode, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it might have an element of a car involved in it, but we are going to try to keep it as much as possible to uh, the topics that you know kind of inspired us to. It will. It's a light. It's a light analogy, and I feel like looking under the hood is broad enough that that's used not just when people want to make car analogies. But we're going to talk about personal development. We're going to talk about ourselves and what are the things that we're doing to make sure that we're in tip top shape so that when we execute in the business, we're doing it with the right energy because that matters. I mean. Garrett, right? The three elements of ninja selling, mindset, skill set, action, or mindset, action, skill set, however you want to put it. Mindset's always first. Mindset, skill set, and action. And the interesting thing is, is that you're right. Mindset is first. And uh, this is where we were kind of, when Matt and I were getting ready for today and kind of figuring out where we wanted to go and what we thought might be of value to all of you. Of course, in my world, I have a project that I'm working on. And I was like, this kind of ties in with something that I'm dealing with in my life right now. And the more we started talking about it, we're like, ah, here's the episode. So this is, uh, Matt, if you don't mind, can I jump into my analogy that I'm working on right now? Yes, of course. Because you are looking under the hood. I am looking under the hood right now. So I recently bought a new project. And uh, to put it into perspective for everybody, uh, because a lot of you know who listen that I like uh, racing and cars, and uh, that's where I kind of spend my free time. I bought myself a new race car, just to put it that into perspective for people. It's a 1983 Mustang uh, that I picked up for a thousand dollars, so that puts it into kind of a and had to trailer back to his house. So. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 yeah, this thing has not been on the road in a while and it will never be on the road ever again. Uh from what I can tell is California is really not going to like this vehicle when it's all said and done. And it could also be because we just don't know the history of it and it may have been involved in some things and maybe it was stolen at one point. But other than that, what do you say like involved in a robbery or something? Like what are you talking about? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you just from what you told me. It is an 83 Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that being said, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just adding a, adding more elements to the story to make it mysterious. So um, what what I am in the process of doing is I'm taking on something that I've never done before in my life, which is rebuilding a, a motor. And so I uh, initially, when it was sold to me, it was like, oh, just bolt on some parts and this thing's going to be awesome. And as I got it home and I started looking at it, I was like, well, you've always said you wanted to rebuild a motor. And this might be your lucky day. Like, let's get into this thing a little bit farther here, which motors are interesting. And I'm just going to kind of paint a picture here. There is all the stuff you can bolt on that you can see from the outside. 
And that's all very important stuff to making a motor work and work very well. All the stuff you can see from the outside. There's another part of the motor, which is the internal part. And uh, some people will call it the bottom end of a motor, whatever that might be. But if you take this motor out of the car and you put it on a stand and you turn the whole thing upside down, this is how you get to the, the insides of the motor. Uh, take an oil pan off, you start pulling out all the internal pieces of it. And it was interesting as I started doing this, I realized that I could have bolted on anything I wanted to this motor and it would have been a ticking time bomb. I could have made it look all spectacular from the outside because as I started taking pieces out, pieces started falling apart literally falling apart. Like I was like pulled out a piston and rings were crumbling off and onto the floor. Rings are what makes the oil stay in the oil side and not in the fire side, like very important parts of a piston that make the engine work, not to get too detailed. So what's interesting with this is that I started to think about it as I was pulling this thing apart. And, and the beauty is, is that all this stuff can be fixed. You don't even need to buy expensive things. Most of the parts that are going to fix this is very, very, very inexpensive stuff that if not taken care of can turn into really expensive things. So like if I would have just bolted everything on and took this thing out and drove it and did what I want to do with it, I probably would be replacing an entire engine. So now we're talking about 3000 to, I don't know, as big as $30,000 for the type of motor I could put into what I want to put into. Or... I can invest about $200 up front and some time and some energy and some passion behind it. And all of a sudden now I have a great moving motor as I go forward with this. What's interesting is that I think in this, turning this back into people's businesses and people's lives, I know a lot of people that are trying to put speed parts on a person or a business or something that they want to go and get to, a dream, a path, something they want to accomplish. And maybe the best thing is actually taking some time to rebuild the internals and to kind of go, what's really happening on the inside of this? So Matt, this got us talking about like mindset type of stuff. Yeah, It got us talking about health. Um, and where people want to go with their health and what that might look like. It got me looking at financials of like investing and things along those lines. So Matt, I want, want you to jump in here because again, I was just excited we got to talk about engines and a motor today. And thank you for letting <laughs> me do that. I've got it out of my system now, but now let's turn it back into like how this all kind of comes together here. Yeah. What stuck to me was when people are looking to like, oh gosh, I need something right now, right? Or um, I, I need to just change this right now. We do have a, a dirty motor. There's some internal challenges that are going on and we just want to like kind of just clean up the outside and run like a performance machine. And I understand like sometimes we get in sticky situations and we need like, we need a boost to get out of there. But if we're not paying attention to the long-term work that we can do for ourselves, the long-term business isn't going to be there. You're going to continually go through these like, all right, I climbed out of the hole. You know, I was, I was holding on up top here. I was able to make some things work, but then I fell back down again. And that is a tough cycle to be in. And so when I think about like, hey, what are we doing to take care of our mindset? For one, connecting with our, our Ninja 9 here is starting with like, are we starting every day, like truly starting the day with our gratitudes and affirmations? Are we writing those things down? Are we spending the time that those things deserve? Because these are things that you can't make up for the next day, right? Like there are certain things in business that we can batch together, right? Like note writing is a daily Ninja 9 habit, two notes a day. If you write 10 notes a week, once a week, you're probably going to do okay with your notes. But if you do your affirmations 500 times once a week, that's not going to make up for doing them 25 times a day, right? If you do 20, 30 gratitudes on Saturday, but you don't do them every other day of the week, that's not going to make up for it. Like these are things that we need to pay attention to on a daily basis in order to take care of the internals. Now for that day, like that Saturday where you loaded up with 30 gratitudes, like you're going to feel like you got shot out of a cannon for that day. You do that affirmation, you really hone it, you feel really good for that day. And then you're going to realize the next day that you got a dirty motor. <laughs> well, and, and I think we can take it down this route too, Matt, is like if you are doing any system, 
And the whole time you're doing it, your brain is going like, I don't know why I'm doing this. This seems silly. I don't, I don't want to be here. This isn't fun for me. I really don't even like doing this. Like that is a dirty, not working well internal motor. You've got issues in there. There's things that need to be addressed. Like maybe you need to change careers. That's been one that I've seen people. It's like, if you hate real estate that much, but you're like, this is how I'm going to make money. Like, believe me, you might want to go find some other place. Like I get it. But there are other things when you start like, and again, mindset's probably the easiest one that you can see where this maybe be broken inside where it's like, they're writing notes and the whole time they're going, I hate writing notes. I don't like doing this. This is not fun for me. I'm doing it because it's a system and they'll do it for a little while. But there's all this negative crap that's attached to this note that we don't even realize. And then we wonder why somebody else talks about how notes were the best thing they ever had in their life and it raised their business to this upper level. And you got another person over here going like, yeah, I did notes for a while and I don't know, I didn't like writing them to begin with. It wasn't fun for me and I didn't get very good results out of it. So I just let that go. Well, it's like, well, what kind of crap were you attaching this note that was Mm non-conscious? Like there was energy that people were getting and they're like going like, I could tell Garrett, oh yeah. (laughs) <laughs> this is an uncomfortable <laughs> note. Like it just doesn't have the good feeling to it. Where you know when you get a note that you open it up and it's got great energy attached to it. We've all had them. Yeah. Well, and that's a good point too. Relating it to something else is also, if, say you're trying to lose weight or get in shape or build muscle, whatever it is, but you have this program and you're like, this isn't going to work. Like you go to the gym, you go out for a run, you go do something, you're like, this is stupid. Like this isn't gonna work. This I, mean, like, I don't I don't like this. This isn't fun because I know it's not gonna produce the results that I want to see. And then it doesn't. And a lot of times too, this becomes from we might be doing things on the periphery if if we're not clear inside, like if we're not taking care of ourselves internally, we'll say we're doing the things, but we might be missing and acknowledging the things that we're not doing or the things that we're doing that are hindering our progress. Like, oh, I'm going to the gym, I'm eating right. And like, it's just not working. It's like, yeah, well, those three or four or five beers that you're having every single night, you're not paying attention to that either. Or that cake that you're having every single weekend when you go to all the birthday parties, you're not, you know, recording that. Or the fact that like, yeah, you're writing notes, but you're not making phone calls or you're making phone calls, but you're not asking Ford questions. Sometimes when we get into this challenging mindset space, we don't even recognize some of the stuff that we're doing or not doing, which is why the daily compounding of making sure that we're taking care of ourselves is important, particularly in real estate and all sales. But in real estate where you do so much, you are a tool for your business. You, your body and your mind is a tool for your business. And you want to have a high performance machine operating there. And if it's dirty on the inside, like your motor, Garrett, it's going to have some problems. Like if it's a big motor, like, yeah, you can pump out some stuff and maybe you can get around the track pretty quickly once, but you probably want to go around it a few more times in order to build a good year and a good, sustainable, long-term business. Well, and and here's my thing going back to the motor, because I I love that you brought it back to the motor, (laughs) is that I think one thing we also need to acknowledge is is that motors need maintenance. Mm Mm-hmm. So a lot of people just go like, oh, I've got a solid platform to build off of. I'm going to strap on all these awesome systems and parts that are going to make this thing thrive and go big. And they're like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. I never have to touch that thing again. And let's just go and build this business. And there's a reason that people have business retreats. And there's a reason that, you know, we have people walk away and do their business plans, you know, every single year and re- like, kind of break things all down. You got to look at that, like rebuilding the motor. And like this motor that I have on a stand and pieces in the garage, which by the way, if you want to follow an engine build, uh, I am going to be putting this all on Facebook. So you can watch an engine build <laughs> if you want to, if you might be interested. Uh, I just have to follow me. But at the it, this is going to be rebuilt again. Like this is my first time rebuilding it. And for what we're using it for, how we're going to be doing this, this will come out of this car again. It will be put back on an engine stand. It will be ripped down just as far as it's being ripped down right now. I'm going to spend probably a week cleaning it all up and doing that all so that it's back to the performance place that I want it to be. And then we're going to put it all back together. And when we do that, we're probably going to find damage in different areas every single time. 
And that's the beauty part about going in and just kind of like reevaluating everything. What's working right now and in a well-oiled machine right now, all of a sudden in a year, we might find there's something else that's broken down that we need to all of a sudden get in there and say, okay, this isn't working right. There's a cylinder that's not even firing here and producing power. Why is that? Let's figure out what's going on and what's causing that. And it might be something simple. It might just be like, oh, <laughs> a bad spark plug. Or it might be something that's really major that we got to go in and do some real surgery on to figure out what's, what is the potential problem here, what's going on. This is what we need to do. And I think a lot of people look at other people out there and they just go like, man, they just seem to have it all put together. They just seem to like win races all the time consistently. And, and I know guys at the racetrack, they rebuild their engine every single race. Like it's not like a race until it breaks. It's a, let's hope we never break and <laughs> let's take this thing like, so we can go out and win race after race after race. And they're funny. They're on the podium all the time and they're not sitting in the pits going, why is this thing broken? And why is it not working right now? And where, like, what's going on? So I think we have this ability in our life. You brought up health, Matt. I'd yeah. love to go down this route just a second. Cause I know that that's more your speed. Yeah, for sure. And I was going to say like, what, let's get into some some things like what are, what do we got to do right so where where would you begin first with getting awareness around how we can even just take a diagnostic of what's going on for me personally like when i'm coaching somebody or working with somebody i'm constantly listening to internal self talk internal self talk is one of those things that a lot of people don't realize how much damage it does when it's negative we come across every once in a while that really positive internal self talk the old joke, though, is, is if you talk to yourself the way, if you had friends that talk to you the way that you talk to yourself, you probably wouldn't be friends with them. Mm -hmm. This is the interesting thing about when you start listening to your internal voice that you have going on. And people open up to their coaches. Let's just say that. They, they put it all on the table usually, and you'll hear things where they're like, yeah, but this has never worked easy for me. I have always struggled with this. or And um, we need to upfront kind of diagnose what what is being said behind the scenes? And that's where I always try to start, Matt, is what what is that internal voice saying about what it feels reality is? Yeah. Well, but in this in that in this context, though, that's important. Yep. You know, what what are you crafting as your personal reality? As Joe Dispenza says, your personality creates your personal reality. Yep. And what I find is what realtors don't do is give themselves time to just stop and think and talk to themselves. And this is the first thing that we need to do is make sure we have space every single day. Because this is another thing that compounds. It's not like you need to go and, and meditate for two hours to figure this stuff out. Like give yourself five minutes a day, just yourself. I love doing this in the morning. Like I get some time to, I, that's, I try to wake up early so that I can get time to myself to just think, no music and other things. Recently got a cold plunge, dip into that thing for five minutes and just Try not to freeze your butt off and just think. Giving yourself just that mental space to just get away from everything and remove all the distractions of the digital devices and everything, you're going to start to learn a lot. And then from there, you're going to be able to say, okay, what are the things I need to work on? Like, do I need to tune up my nutrition? Do I need to tune up my, my movement and my fitness? Do I need to tune up how I'm thinking and talking to people throughout the day? Because maybe you recognize that you're acknowledging negative affirmations through conversation. Like when people say, man, you know, traffic is always tough. The market's horrible. And you're like, yeah, it is. Even though you're like, no, it's not. But now you're affirming it. These are the things that you can gather if you give yourself even just five minutes a day of just nothing, just space. Like you can even just go into your closet, close the door, turn off the lights so you literally can't see anything. And now you're stuck with your thoughts. It's a good thing. So for fun, let's let's break down like as you're saying, Matt. Like let, let's say we take the goal is is we want to run a marathon. Okay, how's that? Yeah. So what I, what I would start with first, and we started to go down this path, but I would write down okay mindset on a piece of paper, and this is where I was talking about what is your internal reality that you believe this world to be and how this works, and I'd say okay my my goal is to run a marathon. What is my mindset about me running a marathon right now? What are the thoughts that come up? Like, and I'll tell you the thoughts that come up in my mind right now. Dude, your knee won't do it. 
that would be a, a mindset that I'd put down real quick. I have I have a knee that if I'm taking care of myself, my knee works really well. If I haven't been exercising and whatnot, it'll give me about a good half mile to a mile. And then it's like, yeah, dude, you're done. We're not going to do that anymore. And all it is, is an overtrained muscle that causes my knee to do that. Like I know it, it's not a new knee rebuild I need, just an overtrained muscle. So you start writing this stuff down. Okay, what is my mindset around this? Endurance wise, how far can I run right now? Not 26 miles, which is put that one down. <laughs> not a positive mindset also. I can't run 26 miles. I can't run five miles. Let's put that one down. Endurance wise, let alone my knees and things like that. Like how do I feel when I exercise to that level? I get winded easily. And you start putting down all these things that are like, because I just haven't trained for this type of stuff. But you start putting all that down. Okay, so then we got that. So we got mindset, skill set. Do I even understand the skills of what it takes to run a marathon? And it's interesting. I have a good friend right now who's running a marathon. He's going through all the things that he's doing to train to run a marathon. And I'm like, dude, I never thought about that. I never thought about I didn't know that. I didn't know that that's how that works. And then he's like going like, well, here's my rest period right now. He's actually running this weekend. And he's like, this is my my downtime right now where I'm not running because it, it does all these different things. And I was like, I never knew that. Like learning all these different things. This is all skill set type stuff that people have in accomplishing this goal of running a marathon. Um, and then the last part is taking action. You can have, once you have the mindset, once you have the skill set involved, then, then you have to show up and you have to take action. And all these pieces go into accomplishing the goals. The first two are really what we, I think I'd lean on, Matt, of like, what do the internals look like? That's where I'd kind of approach that from. And that's that's with everything. I did it with Otto the other, last night we went out to dinner. Otto's my son, by the way. If anybody's going, who in the world's Garrett talking about named Otto now? But it was really interesting. We were talking about investing in real estate and you could just watch him head down, frustrated. He's like, I, he goes, I just want to start making money. He goes, I want to start making money so I can build wealth for myself and grow and have freedom around certain things and do the stuff I want to do. And he goes, I just, I, we talked about wanting to own a home. He's like, I don't get how you do it. Like, he's like, if I want to buy a $250,000 house, how in the world do I scrape together $250,000? And I had this moment, I'm like, do you think you need two hundred and fifty dollars to buy a $250,000 house? He's like, well, yeah, that's what the that's what they the bank is going to want, so you can buy the house from them. I'm like, all right, reel it back, 15 year old. Let's sit down for a second and talk about how real estate works. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, so I, I need 20 percent down. And you watching like lights go off. I'm like, you're a first time home buyer, dude. Like, let's look at this from a totally different angle. I'm like, you could probably get away with three percent down. I'm like, figure out three percent of 250, and we're driving home last night, and he's all of a sudden going like. That's like under ten thousand dollars. I said, "Yeah." <laughs> he goes, "Oh, and you!" All of a sudden, the wheels were turning. This is that dirty crap underneath the surface. It's not really negative, but it's a broken mindset around a goal that you want to achieve. That all of a sudden he's unpacking the boxes of, with the help of some others, with the help of myself, with the help of my wife, asking questions figuring things out, that all of a sudden, by having that cleaned up, opportunities are opening up all around them right now. That brings in the other element of what could be dirtying up the internals is also just a, a lack of knowledge, right? Or perceived knowledge. And and we have to be... And I think this is part of getting the headspace. And, and I know we're talking specifically really about mindset today. I mean, we could go down health and fitness and all that stuff. And, and that's... And motors. And motors, right? Yeah. You know, but that's the brain of the vehicle, right? And we could go down to nutrition and all that stuff. We've done that before. But I like what you said there because it also highlights like when you get the space for yourself, sometimes you recognize, I need to ask somebody some questions. I don't just need to like, because like if I grabbed a, a motor and I'd looked at it, I'd be like, is this dirty? I don't, I don't know. Let me, let me, who do I, let me call Garrett and ask him. I got to have some questions for him. Hey, Garrett, is this bad? Oh yeah, that's bad. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't, don't use that. Don't use that again. <laughs> what do we need to do? Right. And so when you have that headspace, you start to realize like, if it's a challenge around like, okay, I'm none of, I'm doing all the things, but business isn't coming to me. It could be our mindset around. I don't believe that there's business here. I'm leaning into and 
who can I ask? Well, that guy over there seems to be doing some business. Let me go ask him how he feels about the marketplace because maybe my perspective is hindering me and I need to change that perspective. That broken perspective, like Otto had this broken perspective over how, like what the fundamentals were of buying a property, shut him down. And that's the interesting thing is that we don't realize it a lot in our in our world as we're working through it is that we have built realities around these things and your brain will do everything to maintain sanity. And if the inside picture doesn't match the outside picture, that's a sign of a crazy person, by the way. <laughs> Internal doesn't match the outside sign of a crazy person. Your brain will do everything it can to maintain sanity, which means that auto fought me at first. He's pretty stubborn. We have, a, we have a handful of stubborn people in our family between myself and my wife. It's just who we raised. And he drew the line in the sand pretty fast of, I was wrong. And I'm like, really? You're going you're gonna to tell me I'm wrong about real estate and about my beliefs and, and about how this is, at least some fundamentals of how this works. But that's the interesting thing about when you have a broken perception of what might the truth might be out there, is that all of a sudden you can't see solutions. And I had to push on him pretty hard. And we had to do some exercises between the drive from restaurant to home. And all of a sudden, you could watch the doors, start, the lights start to kind of come on of like, I never, I didn't know that. Like, that's really important to know now. That might be with building a business. That might be with building a referral-based business. You might have dirty crap in there that you're holding on to that you've decided is reality, but it's really not the truth at all. It's just your perception of the truth. Mm -hmm. It might be about being wealthy. Uh, I just talked to somebody the other day and I kept saying, we need to rate you. You probably need to step up your average selling price if you want to get to where you want to go. And the marketplace supports her stepping up her average selling price. And the whole time she keeps just telling me about how awful those people are to work with. Mm. And I'm like, would you just think all bad people are wealthy? Well, you're not going to be able to step it up if that's if that's our belief system. I'm like, I know a lot of really good, honest, good, wealthy, really wealthy people. Like, I have a different reality of wealth than you do. And I, and again, this is where you got to step back and say, okay, do I have crud in the motor? Do I have things that are holding me back from running at the high performance level that I possibly could be running at? And again, when we talk about bolting on all the stuff on the outside of the motor mat, that person that believes that, you know, wealthy people that live in high end properties are, notoriously evil people or bad people or whatnot, you could give that person all the best systems, all the things to go out there and build those relationships and connect to those people. And they are going to get crappy results. Oh yeah. That car is going to blow up somewhere on the track. Uh, no doubt. And so I'll, I'll say this, like, as we pull this together, I'm not done cleaning yet. out the, what's that? I'm not done talking about motors. Come on, man. We're just getting rolling. <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. Cleaning out. This is part of So what comes after cleaning the motor after we clean out the internal you get this headspace we got to put it to get back together in the right way too we want to feed it good clean oil we want to make sure you have all the right lubricants in place so that everything fits in the way that it should so that it runs properly and this gets into now after you clean that out going back and feeding your mind the right stuff making sure we're not turning on the news for 10 hours a day that we're eating good quality food, we're drinking enough water, that we're surrounding ourselves with supportive people, that we are compounding our gratitudes and affirmations each day. Get the headspace and then start to put everything back together with the right stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, you're not going to feel 100%, by the way. This isn't like, oh gosh, like I cleaned it and now the car runs. No, we got we to gotta build it back together now. And that takes a little bit of time too before you start seeing the results of going 100 miles an hour on the racetrack and winning the race. But in two, three, four, five weeks, you're like, I'm back together. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling strong. My mindset is durable. It's unshakable. And now look at these results that are coming in. Like everybody I talk to seems so nice. Like I just went on this listing appointment for this luxury home and the homeowners were so incredibly nice and good people. Right. And all, and we just, the good stuff starts to feed in and those old thoughts those old perceptions just don't exist anymore for you. And that's, that's part of this. And so I guess like really Garrett, what we're trying to say is if you're, if you're having, if you're struggling with this, like, and I know this was kind of existential what we were talking about today, but it, it it's, if you think about it, like these are the things just thinking is going to help clear you up so that you can then focus on doing your business without 
cluttering yourself with yourself, right? Like I feel like we get in our own way so much when it comes to business. When it's like, if we just let, if we take ourselves out of it for a minute, our current version of ourselves, we're going to build something so much better. 100%. And again, I think that uh, very rarely do we stop and just tear the motor down, analyze what's going on, what's working and what's not. What is under the surface too? Sometimes we just look at the surface stuff of like, I got marketing, I've got my real estate reviews, I'm making my phone calls. That's all surface stuff. Get down under the surface and figure out what's going on. And Matt, I just want to, I'll wrap it up with this and then you can outro us is that you talked about who are you surrounding yourself with? And if you have goals and dreams that you are trying to accomplish and you find that you have people in your life that are supporting the opposite of that goal, there are people that are reminding you constantly that maybe that's not possible or that's not doable or you know it's not going to happen, uh, find new people. Uh, surround yourself with new people. There's, uh, there's a huge world out there. There's lots of us. And it's amazing. Sometimes you don't have to look very far to find people that will all of a sudden go, you know, you can be a homeowner and here's how you do it. And it doesn't require 100% of the cash up front. It only requires a small amount. And here's what that could look like. Oh, how do you make the house payment? Well, you're young. What if you found four of your friends to rent that house with you and you charge them all rent? You potentially now are living in that house without making any house payment at all. And now you just are building wealth around this thing. That would be surrounding yourself around the right people to help you see a path where he could easily surround himself with a handful of other people that go like, yeah, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how people buy homes. How do you save that much money? How do you do it? Well, probably not for us. Oh, man, the people. And I think we actually have on our list to do an episode on who you're surrounding yourself with another. And, and we've talked about this before, but man, so important. Your environment, the people who, who are around you. And the thing with that is too, you need to have the headspace to be able to understand what that is. If you don't take the space to look internally and see like, hey, what dirt's in here that I need to clean out? You're not going to find yourself around those people because when we're in an environment, our vision is limited, right? Whether that environment is is great or not. And we want to we want to extend that vision out as far as we can. But if we're in a challenging environment, sometimes that vision just comes in really, really tight. And if we don't step out of it for a second to think so that we can see beyond it, we can be stuck in that in that cycle for a long time. And so take the space, take the headspace. 100%. Look under the hood, clean the motor. I think that topic <laughs> that we're going to talk about who you're surrounding yourself, I think it has to do with racing. <laughs> I said, so just, just so if you haven't caught on anybody who's listening right now, I, I, when I go out and I go and hang out on track for a while, I come back with like 10 analogies. That was a different one, Garrett. That's the learning from others ones that we're going to do. That's true. <laughs> I come back with like 10 different analogies and I'm like, Matt, what about this? He goes, did, did they all have to be about racing? I'm like, it's where my mind's at right now. Hey, let us know if, if you think that Garrett and I should start a, a car YouTube channel, a YouTube channel about cars and we'll become car YouTubers. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm in. As well as continue to be your humble co-hosts here on the Ninja Selling Podcast and and guiding guiding you all here. And so, well, Garrett, I will say, if you do want to comment on that, head over to our Facebook group, The Ninja Selling Podcast. Search it on Facebook. We post the episodes in the group. And so you can comment on that thread, which you guys are doing great with, by the way, giving good feedback on the episodes, sharing your thoughts, pros and cons, which we all we appreciate all of that stuff. If you do want to leave us a review on whatever app you're listening to, that would be really cool too. It kind of helps us with the ranking systems, which does some other podcast wizardry stuff that we never thought that we would be into when we started this whole thing. But now that we continue to get more and more listeners, thanks to all of you who are sharing and continuing to show up, we appreciate it. It kind of helps us rethink, oh gosh, what else can we do to elevate the podcast so that we can reach more and more people to help more and more people? Because that's what we love to do. So we appreciate that. If you want to learn more about Ninja Selling, if you want to dive deep, if you want one-on-one -on -one attention, like we talked about today, you know, because this, this mindset element is a big part of what we do in coaching, head over to ninjaselling.com and click on the coaching button up at the top in the personal coaching. You can reach out to us and we can talk to you about what that might look like for you and your business and how we can help support you one-on-one, -on -one, because that's what that's what we do. And we love seeing people thrive with it. So, And coming soon, we're actually going to have some interviews with people as well to talk about their experiences, which is going to be really, really cool. So 
check all that stuff out. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this podcast. As always, we love you all. Hope that you have an awesome day and we'll catch you on the next one. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninja selling podcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.